the Lord Jesus Christ is holy, he's healthy, he's almighty, he's a king of authority, he's full of power, he's all seeing God, he's all pure God, he's all compassionate God, he's a gentle God, he's a harmless God. He's all loving, he's all approachable, he's all giving, he's all protecting, he's all firmness, and he's all joyful, he's satisfied, his words are sweet, respectful, comforting words comes out of him. Right, God is good all the time. and all the time. Let's turn our Bible to Proverbs chapter. Um, all right, let's. The last verse that we left, we'll just visit again the last verse, Proverbs 19, and then we will take it up from there. I've been reading the book of Ecclesiastes these days. Amazing. Sometime I like to preach on that. Proverbs 19. Pray for me, I'm very tired. Proverbs 19, verse number 18. Uh, yes. Yes. And let not thy souls fail for his friend. All right. Chasten thy son. Right? Proverbs. And so it's a verse for every parent. Every parent. Chasten thy son. 19 verse 18. Oh, it's 19 verse 18. Chasten thy son. So basically, discipline, discipline your sons. Uh, chasten thy son while there is hope, and let not thy soul spare for his crying. You know, if you take, if you look at the internet today, and uh, if any parents discipline their children, and if someone takes a video, hmm? takes a video and post it on the internet. You know how it will look? It will look like the most cruelest thing that a father is doing towards his son or a mother doing it to her ch children, right? So when you post it on the, someone takes it and posts it. And it will look, at, it will look like a cruelest thing and that's what the world says, you should not be spanking your children. You know, it's but look what this verse says. Chasten thy son while there is hope. And then look at the next sentence. And let not thy soul spare for his crying. He may cry. That doesn't mean he's going to die. But if you spank, it should hurt him. Because there's no use of spanking if it doesn't hurt. Because if it doesn't hurt, it will not change. You understand? So, the Bible says, don't worry about his crying. If it's crying, if he's crying, if it hurts, it will get into his heart and he will be corrected. There is hope. Hmm? But we got to be careful about until what age we are spanking our children, not any age, okay? And uh, we have to be very careful about that too. There are certain age that after that we should not be using a raw to spank. It is only at a certain age that we got to be doing it. All right, Isaiah 26. So I will not say what age. I have a particular age for my children. But every father, every mother knows about their children. 
Isaiah 26. <clears throat> Isaiah 26, look at verse number 16. Isaiah 26, verse number 16. Mm. They poor out of prayer when life chastening, chastening of what chastening. chastening was upon him. So you know what's happening? This person is praying, right? <coughs> this person is praying. Verse number 16, Lord, in trouble have they visited thee. They poured out a prayer when thy chastening was upon them. When God chastises us, when God corrects us, when God sends some kinds of pain and sorrows in our life because of what we did or did not do, a righteous behavior and a righteous response towards God's chastisement is always a broken heart prayer. Right? A broken heart prayer. We pray to God when we are in trouble. We pray to God when we are in pain. We pray to God when we are corrected. Hmm? So what we need to do? Never be angry because of the chastisement. Okay? Never be angry, but what do you do? You pray. Because it is possible for a man to become angry with God when chastised. But that happens when you are living a carnal life. And that's why today a lot of people live and go away from faith. They say, oh, you know, I used to do this, I used to go to church, I used to pray, I used to support, I used to do all these things, and God did this to me, and why should I follow God anymore? And many a times our, our relationship with God is based on what I do for Him. That is the nastiest thing a Christian can grow up in his life. Look what I do for God. Look, I'm praying. Look, I'm going to church. Look, I'm singing for Him. Look, I give all these things. Look, I'm soul winning. Look, I do this. I, I know. Look what I do for Him. And when things doesn't go right, you become angry with God. We got to be always humble. Prayerfully. And know that you and I deserve nothing. It is all because of God's goodness, who we are, what we are. It's not what I do for him. I thank God I get to do this for him. You don't have to. God doesn't need you. God doesn't need me. God can do a better job with somebody else than me. But for some reason, God just thought to give you and me an opportunity to serve Him. You understand? You agree with me in that? Yes. He doesn't need you and me. He can use a donkey to speak. He doesn't need you and me to pra praise Him. He can make the rocks to praise. But in, in all His Absolute wisdom, he still chooses to give you and me the opportunity to praise him and to serve him. So let's not forget that, okay? So it's not what I do for him. It's what he does for, him, for me by giving me an opportunity to serve him. So when chastisement comes... May prayer be your rope to hold on to. And so Isaiah says here to God in prayer about the people, Lord, in trouble have they visited thee. 
They poured out a prayer when the eye chastening was upon them. <coughs> Whatever your pain may be, secret pain, open pain, struggles, may, it may not be that every pain is God's chastisement. It may not be every sickness is God's chastisement. But God uses everything to make us a better person, a better Christian. God is able to use everything and he uses everything. And that's why in Romans, take Romans 8. What is so great about Romans 28? Romans 8, 28. What is so great about it? Romans 8, 28. And we know. know, we know which means, we, we know this is not surprising. And we know, this is not surprising, this is not something that took us by shock. We know this, we have a relationship. And we know. That all things work together for good to them that love. Ah, you know what that means? All things work together. Today's pain that you are going through will work together for your good tomorrow. Hmm? Today's struggle that you are going through will work together for your good tomorrow. May I say even today's sickness that you may go through will work together for your good tomorrow. All things. Today's hatredness from your enemies towards you will work together. You know, one was I'm reminded in the book of Proverbs. You know, where. Okay, let me come to the. Remind me that verse, okay? That all things work together for good to whom? Only if you're loving God, God is able to turn all your problems for your good. Amen? So the secret of turning all your problems for your good is what? Loving God. Loving God. So I have to love God in every situation. Hmm? So I have to purposely, even when I'm going through, I'm like, Lord, I love you. No matter what, I don't understand these situations. I'm still going to love you. And then God does what? This is not for all Christians. This is for Christians who love God. This is for Christians who? Love God. Now, can Christians not love God? Yes. Let me go to... Sorry, what was that verse you asked me last week? You asked me a particular verse. Let me do the CID work now. <laughs> uh, there is a particular verse you asked me. I just got reminded now. Mm. Okay. First Corinthians sixteen twenty two. First Corinthians sixteen twenty two. That's the last chapter. Romans 9, 12. No, that is about Esau. Yes. Yeah, this First Corinthians 16, 22. You asked me last week one. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, yes. let him be anathema. anathema. <coughs> Maranetha. So you got two Greek words you learned today. Right? Maranatha. Anathema. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ. So here in Romans 8 28 it says, And we know that all things work together for good. 
to them that love God. Protect your heart, dear friends. When you have issues in life, protect your heart. Verse 22, 1 Corinthians 16. And now I'm reading Romans 8, 22. Okay? So protect your heart. Keep thine heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. Because a crooked heart can tell you, hey, what, 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 what's going on, man? What's the use of all the devotions towards God? Look what is happening. Look what God is doing to your mother. Look what God is doing to your children. Look what God is doing to your job and your business and your spouse. Forget it. You don't have to love God. And when that kind of attitude comes, nothing will work together for your good. Hmm? But all things will work together for good. To whom? To them that love God. Two words. Love God. This will change your life completely. He will turn all your sorrows into joy. All your problems will end up into a blessing. If you continue to love God. If you continue to love. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Now look at that. Another thing. To them who are called. According to his purpose. According to his purpose. As a great word to hang upon. Hmm? So when you are chastised, don't get angry with God. Love God. He will turn everything for your good. Alright, Isaiah 53. A great verse, great, 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 great verse. Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53 speaks about whom? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Isaiah 53. And look at verse number 5. Isaiah 53, verse number 5. He was wounded for our transgressions. You know what was the sin of Adam and Eve? Transgressions. What? Not eating apple. Not eating, eating sour. Transgressions. What is transgression? Disobeying God's word. Disobeying. So it was already done in the heart. Then it came into action. Hmm? Crossing the mark. So if I'm crossing, God puts this line and if I'm crossing, I'm transgressing. I'm crossing the boundary. I'm transgressing. So verse 5 says, but he was wounded for our transgressions because we always cross the boundaries. He was bruised for our... Just remember, when we sin, we are actually seeing the pain in his body. And he went through all those things for you and for me. May we not forget those things. May we not take God's scourging, the Lord's pain, the Lord's suffering on the cross, the Lord's wounds for granted. May this be a reminder. Man, every time, every time I do this, every time I do that, he was wounded for our transgressions. You know what is this? 
he was wounded what is that wounded means wounded means what what is this what is this past tense right he did it in past for my of today he went through all the thing for my sins that i will be committing every time i heard god it hurts him not just emotionally physically he went through all that thing now does it grieve god now huh it grieves the holy spirit how does the holy it grieves the holy spirit keep your finger there in isaiah 53 come to ephesians 5 5 or 4 Everybody okay? Yes. Take four. Ephesians four. Ephesians four. Look at verse twenty-nine. Verse twenty-six onwards. Be angry. Be. So you have a permission to be angry. It's not wrong to be angry. It's not sin to be angry. It's good to be angry. If you are not angry, that means there's a real problem with you. Anybody here don't get angry, huh? At least you get hungry. <laughs> We all get angry, isn't it? Let no, I uh, uh, mean, be angry and sin not. You can be angry, but don't sin. How do we sin? Giving bad words, telling lies. cursing people slapping and hitting and murdering violence right verbal physical emotional hatyachar be angry and sin not let not the sun go down upon your wrath let not your sun go down upon your wrath which means don't go to bed with a sorry without reconciling with that person it may be your spouse it may be your friend it may be your church member it may be your children it may be your parents don't do that it's not good for you be angry and sin not let not the sun go down upon your wrath why if i do that what happens the devil takes over my heart and my mind Look at that verse. Neither give place to the devil. He takes place. He takes control, like how the devil took control of Ananias and Sapphira. Right? He takes control of our mind and our heart. Huh? We've got to be very careful with that. Look, verse twenty-eight. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. You know why you should work? <laughs> first, you help yourself. You help your family. No, first you don't do that. First you. give it to god so that you will be blessed then take care of your family and then when left more help others help others i didn't write god wrote it that means there is a blessing if you obey hmm Let him that stole still no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the things which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. 
Are you helping somebody? Verse 29. Let. What? Let no. Corrupt communications. Proceed. Out of your. Mouth. Why corrupt communication proceeds out of my mouth? Because my heart is corrupted. Right? When my heart is corrupted, it comes out of the mouth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying. That you may minister grace unto the hearers. When you speak, Okay, listen very carefully. When you speak, you're manifesting your character. Right? When you speak, you're showing who you are. That's why the, somebody said, you would, rather think, uh, you would rather let people think you're a fool because you have nothing to speak. Then you open your mouth to speak and confirm their thoughts. Right? So when you speak, be wise in your words. And the Bible says, use words to edify, encourage. I'm not trying to boast about, but I have a Catholic priest who is a friend of mine, very good friend of mine. And since it is on the, it's going to be on the, I will not tell, but we use his facility once in a year. <laughs> He's a very good friend of mine. He, he loves me. So we spend time having tea and we talk and we have fun and all this thing. He listens, he asks many questions and he's a good guy. I mean, not good, great guy. <laughs> no one is good, not even me, okay? Uh, but he's a nice fellow. And every time we speak, he says, Son, when I talk to you, I'm revived and refreshed somehow. Now that puts more accountability in me. Though it encourages me, but it puts more accountability in me. That next time when I talk to him, I better be careful and encourage him again. Hmm? And God says, when you speak, your word should be edifying to others. So I need to ask my question to myself. When I speak, are people encouraged? Am I hurting? Am I grieving the Holy Spirit? Look what the Bible says. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the ears. Verse 30. And grieve. So because of corrupt communication, what happens? When corrupt communication comes, verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. How many times in a day that Christians may be Grieving the Holy Spirit. For what? Corrupt communication. <laughs> we are so quick to say that politicians are corrupted, right? <laughs> He's a corrupt politician. He's a corrupt this, that. But look what God says. We are worse than politicians, actually, if we are not being... Because we know the gospel, we know Christ. And knowing Christ, if we are using corrupt communication, we are more corrupted than the politicians themselves. They are doing it not knowing the true living God. Right? Not knowing the true living God. They have their own rewards of judgments. But how much, much, how much more we, who are grieving God... Wounding God, chastising God. 
punishing with our attitude, with our words. All right? Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Wow, when that brother says something, I love to hear. He encourages me. He edifies me. He uplifts me. Hmm? Verse 30, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby he has sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. But you don't know, Pastor, about them. I know. They may be very, 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 very bad. But what about me? Am I representing Christ properly to people? So God says, hey, I, I understand about them. They may be wrong. I know they are corrupt. They are perverts. But how about you, Lordson? What about your bitterness in your heart? Right? What about the clamor in, a, in your heart? The anger in your heart? And, and let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all my life. And be kind one to another. Tender hearted. Forgiving one another. Why should I forgive? Even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. I'll tell you, to whom much forgiveness is given, he will be forgiving much. And God expects you to forgive others. Now, why this thing came? We are wounding God with corrupt communication. Grieving the Holy Spirit. Come to Isaiah now. Isaiah 53 verse 5 But he was wounded for our transgression. Look at that. And he was, what is that? He was, past right? He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace <laughs> was upon him. So that you and I can be peaceful. He was chastised. Does God need chastisement? But he took it on him. So you and I can have peace. You know my dear friend, if we just understand these truths, we'll be more forgiving and kind. If we understand what God did for you and for me. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Look at that. And with his stripes, we are healed. We are healed. I want to take you to what Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 2. Peter quotes the same verse. First Peter chapter 2. Look at verse 24. He uses and quotes the same verse and says, Let's read 22 onwards so you know the context of this verse. Who did no sin? So it's speaking about sin, okay? Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. There is only one person in this world who never committed any sin. And every religion agrees that there is only one who never committed sin. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Sorry? 
Of course, Islam believes in virgin birth. And Islam believes that Jesus never committed sin. In Hinduism, it is not clear this name or Risa or something, but the Hinduism speaks about the Prajapati who had no sin but came and died for the sins of the people, will die for the sins of the people by shedding his blood. And so, there's only one person who died for the sins of the people. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm? But everyone else committed sin. So the Bible says there is none righteous, no, not one. He who knew no sin became sin for us. So, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 22, Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, now, I know you're not Jesus and I'm not Jesus, right? Somebody slapped Jesus, just say, give it the other side. But he never said, what if they do the third time, right? Did he? he said, one time, second time, third time, he never said. But he said something, <laughs> if you don't have a sword, sell your suit and buy one. The Bible teaches self-defense. The Bible never tells you to attack anybody. The Bible never tells you to kill anybody. The Bible does teach you to defend yourself. Understand? Who when he was reviled? Reviled not again. There was a pastor called Frank Norris. He was a Baptist pastor in America. <clears throat> His preaching was hurting the mafias. His preaching was really making the unbelievers angry. So one guy um, on the radio challenged Pastor Norris. If you continue to preach about Christ and whatever you're preaching, I'll come to your office and shoot you where you are. He openly told that thing. And man, this man really kept his word. The next day, he came to the office after Pastor Norris preached. He says, you know what? Yesterday, I told the whole world that I'm going to shoot you, and today I'm come to shoot you. And before this guy could put his hand inside his pocket to remove his gun, Pastor Norris took the gun under his table and shot him, doom, 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 right in his office. Now, Pastor Norris was never arrested because he defended himself. People hated him. He was a pastor of the First Baptist Church in America. They hated him for the way he preached. And so one day about 300 people came with hockey sticks and, and sword and all to burn down his church building and to kill him. And they all came and shouting, so he comes down. And they want to burn him and kill him and burn his building. He said, he said, if there is anyone who is so strong, let him come and first do these things. <laughs> and when he said that, they all went back, never came back. He was a very different person. He was a man who was filled with the Holy Spirit. People would get scared when he would stand. He was a simple guy, small guy. But the Spirit of God was all over him. Hmm? So, yeah, the Lord told them to, I'll show you that verse. One day I was preaching about that. Two ladies came to our church many years back for the first time. And they were like, oh, we couldn't, we couldn't believe that Jesus would ever say those things to take the sword. Where is that verse? After his resurrection? You know, he says, buy a coat, take a purse, and if you don't have a sword, sell your coat and buy one. Somebody can find that verse?
Look for the word purse in your... P-Q-R-S-T. And the word is... Pursue. Look at uh, Luke chapter... Or is it Luke chapter 10? Is it? I'm just guessing. I saw one verse. Okay. 22? Very good. Thank you. It's better to give the verse than to simply say and leave it, right? Verse tw- chapter 22, verse? 36. Then said he unto them, But now he, has, he that has a purse, let him take it. So before when Jesus told them, you know what? Don't take anything with you. Just go as you are. Don't carry your purse, right? And wherever you go, just go say, Peace be unto you, unto this house. And stay there as long as they feed you. And after that, leave the place. If they don't receive you, dust your shoes and get out of that village, right? But now he says, look at verse 35. And he said unto them, When I sent you without purse and scrape and shoes, lacked ye anything? And they said, Nothing. Verse 36. Then said he unto them, But now he that has a purse, let him take it. So if a pastor is having a bank balance, please don't accuse him. Bank account. If he has a wallet, don't accuse him. If he has a a better bike than you, don't accuse him. (laughs) Okay? Then said he unto them, But now he that has a purse, let him take it. And likewise his script, script. And he that has no, what? So, let him what? Sell his garment and buy? One. For I say unto you that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressors. For the things concerning me have an end. Verse 38. (laughs) This is... And they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. And he said unto them, it is enough. Don't buy too many. (laughs) That will be a problem. Two is better than one. Amen? So he's not calling a a group of mafias. The Lord says, no, 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 don't don't, don't be like the world. But just protect yourself. You don't have to die before your time. Do you know you can die before your time? Before the time appointed? Hmm? Book of Ecclesiastes speak about it. All right. <clears throat> oh, we are still in Isaiah, right? So Isaiah fifty-three, verse number five. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was. Br- Wait, First Peter, right? Chapter two. I'm sorry. First Peter, chapter two, verse twenty-four. <clears throat> First Peter chapter 2 verse 24. So we were quoting from Isaiah 53 verse 5. Peter is quoting, taking that verse. And so we need to understand what healing does that mean. Right? The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are. Past tense, isn't it? So are you healed completely? Do you get headaches? Yes or no? Do you get cold, cough, fever, yes. sore eyes, yes. <laughs> stomach ache, many sicknesses? So the verse does not speak about your physical sickness. It speaks about your spiritual sickness. Because the verse in 22 says, Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth 
righteously. O oh God, I surrender myself. Verse 24. Who his own self bear what? Our sickness? Our cancer? Many godly good people have died with many kind of sicknesses. You understand? Who in his own self bear our sick sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins look at that should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were healed speaking about our sins not your corona and forona it's about our sins right now Let's take the last verse, Jeremiah 30. Jeremiah 30, verse number 14. Jeremiah 30, verse number 14. Huh? Chapter 30, Chapter 30, verse number 14. The word of God says what it says. All thy lovers have forgotten thee. Mm, all, your, all thy lovers have forgotten thee. They seek thee not. Yes. For I have wounded thee with the wound of thy enemy. Hmm. Because thy sins were increased. Chastisement comes due to <coughs> sin. Chastisement comes due to sin. sin. When you sin, God chastises you. If God doesn't chastise you, then you may not be saved. Chastisement is an evidence. One of the evidence, one of the evidence, one of the many evidence of salvation because God chastises his son alright when we come back we'll be studying more of this next week so my dear friends whatever we studied today take it to your heart and apply it to yourself the Bible study as much as we study for the sake of knowledge may we grow spiritually amen